Well, dear friends, let's get going. We're going to close our eyes and have a prayer to get started. So let's close our eyes. Our gracious Father in heaven, it is by inspiration that your word was given to us. It is as the Spirit of God moved upon the hearts of mankind that they recorded what they had seen, what you instructed them to do, Father. And because of that, we are in great need that your Spirit again will guide us, that your Spirit will be that interpreter of its own writings. Thank you again that we can ask you, Holy Spirit, to guide us and instruct us in truth. And Father in heaven, we know that as we come down towards the end of time, that the, the devil will be a roaring lion and that his objective will be to deceive mankind. But we know that you have oil that needs to be put on our eyes so that we can see and that that oil is the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So please, Holy Spirit, be that oil on our eyes tonight so that we can truly see. And now, gracious Father, be with us, for we invite you to be with us, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, dear friends, the very first verse that I'm going to take you to is found in Isaiah chapter 8. But before I read it, I've been receiving via the social media, especially on WhatsApp and uh, sometimes on Facebook, I received a young man's video recording where he had taken the recordings of what had happened at the Commonwealth opening, the opening of the Commonwealth Games, and I think it was in London. And then he took this apart and he brought to our attention how that that was in actual fact. And he jumped around quite a lot in his presentation of what he was trying to show, but he was referring to it as the Tower of Babel. And then he was talking about the, the one eye and then the gates of darkness and then the people that were worshipping it. And then they had this golden calf that came, or not golden calf, but a calf that came out and that it all of a sudden came to life, etc. And he was saying how that the image received life, etc. Now, dear friends, first of all, right off the cuff here. I want to tell you that you need to be very cautious as to who you listen to. And I must admit, I am a bit shocked personally when I see the people who are placing that information on the social media. It makes me realize that there is still a lot of um, work to be done in drawing the attention of God's people to the truth regarding the different matters. Now, I am going to explain this, but first of all, I want to make it very clear to you that that whole presentation that took place at the Commonwealth Games, the literal uh, display that was going on there is not, I want to categorically make this clear, is not a fulfillment of Revelation chapter 13 and I am going to go and explain why I say this. So please dear friends, this young man that does this presentation, I'm aware that probably he has a partial knowledge of what to expect but it's really not what Revelation 13 is revealing to us is going to take place in the end of time and I'm going to explain this to you. Okay. Now, let's get started first of all, and I want you to go with me to, rep to Isaiah, I apologize, Isaiah chapter 8, and we're going to look first of all at verse 12. Okay, Isaiah chapter 8, and I'm going to be starting to read from verse 12. And uh, I'm reading out of the New International as always. Okay? It says there in verse 12, Do not call conspiracy everything 
this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. I, I think that verse is self-explanatory. There's a lot of people speculating regarding what's going on and what to expect. And they are, I would like to almost say, false alarmists. I also want to warn you about this, that your attention might be drawn to this whole display that took place there. And probably as you look at it, you can pick up a whole lot of different things and get certain interpretations from it. But it could also be a smoke screen, dear friends. Your attention is being drawn to something. You're looking at that and you're not really open to see or to see what the devil is going to do. Because you have been tunnel visioned in order to look at something that is happening at the Commonwealth opening of the Games. And I see, according to Llewellyn, that it was in Birmingham that this whole um, presentation took place. So thank you, Llewellyn, for that insight. Then I want you to notice what verse 13, the Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. So dear friends, what I want you to become aware of and that is that if you really want to be clued up, find out what God's word has to say. It's so interesting that towards the end of that particular chapter, Isaiah chapter 8, it says in verse 19, When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? And dear friends, the part that really always catches me, who whisper and mutter. You know, it's like um, a little bit of deception going on there. The counsel is, inquire of your God. Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony, testimony of warning. If anyone, listen to this dear friends, if anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. So what I'm trying to say to you, in order to put a light on this whole experience, I'm going to take you to God's word, because this young man quoted various things. He, as I said, he was all over the place, but part of what he really was bringing out was Revelation chapter 13. Now, before I go any further regarding Revelation chapter 13, I want you to understand something about the book of Revelation. Now, this is a cardinal rule, dear friends, when trying to understand the book of Revelation. The first point of departure in trying to understand what's happening in the book of Revelation is that your point of departure is this, that everything recorded in Revelation is first of all in a symbolical form. And I'm going to explain that. And in order to understand the symbol, you're going to go to Revelation itself, perhaps, or to the rest of the word. But the rest of the word and Revelation, will, you will find the, the keys to interpret the symbols found in Revelation. Okay, so already right here, I want to say this, and I, let me just read it to you. Part of the things that he address was what we find in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15. Now I want you to recognize that he also referred to that incidence there in the wilderness where after Moses and Aaron had, uh, sorry, Moses had gone up into the mountain, they approached Aaron and asked Aaron to help them to make a golden image. Now without a doubt, dear friends, that is literal. That really happened. 
They brought their gold to Aaron. Aaron molded a calf out of it, and they danced and they worshipped around it. But there was no uniform dancing in it. Dear friends, not like it shows there at Birmingham and the opening there. There was a lot of choreography going on there, people moving in routine. That's not how worship is actually taking place. Worship is spontaneous and movement is according to the person and what is going on. True worship. Then I also want you to notice that it says in verse 15 of Revelation chapter 13, the second beast. Okay, so now we've already been drawn to a beast. Now, if you make the next part of the information to be literal, then the beast has to be literal, dear friends. You can't make part of the chapter literal and the other parts of the chapter symbolic. And remember, as I said to you, the first point of departure is that it is symbolical. So we read there, the second beast, which is again a symbol um, given to us, I'm going to explain that to you, was given power. So power was given to the second beast to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. So right here we find that the second beast gives breath or life to the first image. So let's have a look at this. In order to look at the first image, I'd like you to go to the first part of, the, of Revelation chapter 13. It says in Revelation chapter 13 verse 1, The dragon stood on the shore of the sea. Now is this literal? Is it a literal dragon? Not according to the first principle. The first principle is it is symbolical. So, what is the dragon then? Now remember I said to you, the word of God will, will tell you what the key principles are. And in Revelation chapter 12, we, we don't have to go very far. We actually find who the red dragon is or this dragon that stands on the seashore. In Revelation chapter 12, it says in verse 3, Another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous, and then it colors it in, red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. Now I want you to notice, this red dragon has um, seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns on its head. But then I want you to notice, well, let me first carry on. Then I want you to look at verse 9. What is this red dragon? Verse 9 says, and there doesn't talk about red dragon, it just refers to it as a dragon. Verse 9, the great dragon was hurled down. So it was in heaven, but it's hurled down. Down to where? To planet earth. It's also found in Revelation chapter 12. And if you have to go to verse um, 12 of that, therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. But now it doesn't refer to the dragon as the dragon. It refers to him as the devil. But let's carry on reading verse 9. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So what do we find here? That the, the symbol, the dragon, is given a name and it's basically the devil or Satan, that ancient serpent. Okay, so without a doubt, let's paraphrase the first part of Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 now. And the devil stood on the shore of the sea. Now, again, we're talking about the shore of the sea. It's not a literal sea, dear friends. In actual fact, according to the word of God, that will be multitudes of people. It will actually be all of mankind that is found on planet Earth. That is what the sea symbolizes, mankind on planet Earth. So he is standing in the presence of mankind. He is here, dear friends. Then it says there, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. Now, if you make this other beast, as we've just found there in Revelation chapter 15, to be literal, 
Then the dragon has to be literal, the sea has to be literal, and this first beast that comes up out of the sea has to be literal. But it's not. The, the, it is defined, it has 10 horns, interesting, similar to what we discovered there as to who the dragon and what the dragon looked like. He had ten horns and seven heads, and with ten crowns on its horn, and on each head a blasphemous name. Then I want you to notice, verse 2. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had the feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. Now, dear friends, we are describing the first beast. I'm not going to go into all of that. I want you to understand that immediately we have to Stick to the first principle. This is all symbolical, not literal. So you can't break the rule. You can't decide, well, I'm going to make this literal and I'm going to make that symbolical. No. There are other ways to define when what you're reading is actually literal. But you, you need to know more in order to do that. So what I'm saying to you here, dear friends, if you're not a student of Revelation and you haven't learned the principal keys of how to approach the book of Revelation, my counsel to you is to take everything that people speak about, especially those who aren't students of Revelation, with a pinch of salt. It really, you have to, because the, the conspiracy that they're bringing out is going to cause you to be afraid unnecessarily. Dear friends, and by getting afraid and looking at something like that, it is not that what you should be afraid about. As we read there in Isaiah, you should fear the Lord. And here in Revelation chapter 13, our Heavenly Father, God is actually revealing to us what the truthful of the matter is. But it is not my intention tonight to give the interpretation. I just want you to understand that I'm concerned that people who especially those who, who are part of the Seventh-day Adventist movement actually still listen and look at all of these things that are presented on the um, social media. And almost I see them being alarmed. And dear friends, I'm talking about um, some members who are, have been members for years. And this really concerns me. Now, I want you to also notice, it says in verse 14 of Revelation chapter 13, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. Now, in order to understand this again, we're not talking about all the people of the earth. The moment you use the word inhabitant in the symbolical language found in the book of Revelation, the inhabitant is the unbeliever. Do you understand that? It's not a child of God. Or let me change it. It is not a believer who is going to be deceived. It is an unbeliever who's going to be deceived. So what is the principle I need to understand here? Then in order not to be deceived, I need to study the word of God and believe what I'm studying. So somebody needs to teach us what is going on and then we need to place our confidence in the word. And as a result of doing that, we will not fear all of these conspiracy um, announcements. Okay. The next thing I want you to notice is in Revelation. So I'm not getting into depth. I just want to show you. We have a second beast. It says in verse 11, And I saw a second beast coming up, now this time, not out of the sea, but out of the earth. But again, not literal, and there is an explanation for that. But as I said, that's not my intention tonight. It goes on to say, it had two horns like a lamb. So immediately it has the word like a lamb. But then it says, but it spoke like a dragon. Now immediately already I know who the dragon is. The dragon is that old serpent. The lamb, without doubt, if you go to Revelation chapter um, 5, particularly you'll find a lamb that stands in the presence of God and that lamb was slain and that lamb is Jesus Christ. So it's actually saying here that the second beast is going to have a, 
uh, how can I say, a godly appearance. He's going to look like the Christian will be. But when you listen to his words, it's not going to be the words of God. It's going to be the words of the dragon. And remember, the main purpose of the dragon is to deceive you. Now, there's a lot more I can speak about this. But I want you to notice that this second beast is given authority to go and make an image to the first beast and then to give to that image life. So right here, I want you to understand that image is symbolical, not literal. And so therefore, this whole display there at Birmingham and the opening, one can look for things into that, but it is, it is conspiracy. Now, in order to clarify this, I want to use something very simple. About seven, eight years ago, I was doing a presentation to a group of businessmen. And in my um, presentation, I gestured this way. I lifted my hands up and I said to them, you need glasses so that you can see. Okay. Now, immediately, a people, um, well, one person in particular came up to me and said to me, Vili, you should never do that. Because in actual fact, that is a sign of, um, you know, the, the Freemasons, the Illuminati. And basically what this stands for is 666. And I looked at him and I was astounded. Now, first of all, he's now drawn my attention to something. And no matter how I look at it, he's made me look at it as 666 but i want you to understand this if you are a scuba diver and you are down in the water and there you can't communicate verbally because um, you're just blowing bubbles out so how do you indicate to a person that everything is all right this is the sign that you use to say Everything is all right. Now, I want you to notice, if you go and look at these pictures that you get, that you add on, I forget what they're called. But you know, when you've done a, you sent a text, you'll put a little praying hand or you'll put a thumbs up if it's something to agree. And I want you, if you're going to look there, you'll find there's a little symbol of a hand going like that. Now, that's definitely not, dear friends, a symbol indicating 666. But yet, if you don't know any better, then that is what it's going to be. Now, it's sad, dear friends. The point I'm trying to bring home to you is be careful who you are listening to. Paul makes it very clear that there are some people that should not be teachers of the Word of God. You need to choose your teachers carefully. They need to be students of the Word they need to have a clear understanding of the principles. That means there must be some schooling, some background in order for them to be able to give you an interpretation. I hope the study has been interesting to you. Um, I want to just make it clear again. Please, dear friends, if you want to know something about a post that you received, I, for example, received a post today from somebody indicated to me that they found a Bible at the bottom of the Bible in, in right in the beginning and indicated that all of what was found in this particular book was um, not real. And I was a bit shocked to see it because in all the Bibles that I've ever read that has never been displayed there. So somehow I think there is something going on there is something superimposed there or there's a hoax and it's for the purpose of discrediting the reality of God's Word. 